Hey, this is Mike Matthews from MuscleLife.com. In this short video, I'm going to talk about protein timing and how it affects muscle growth. That is, uh, when you eat your protein and how frequently you eat protein. So let's talk about when first. Um, the two times when it actually matters uh, are pre and post workout. Um, the effect isn't that great. I'm going to link a study down below if you want to actually go ahead and read. It's a good uh, meta-analysis of uh, this subject and it reviews quite a few other papers. Um, but having protein, especially protein that is digested quickly and that's high in leucine content like whey protein, which is my um, pre- and post-workout protein of choice, um, which I will link down below if in terms of the product that I use, which is actually my own, and you can check it out. Um, but the reason why is uh, my product, my way, is 100% whey isolate with additional leucine. And that leucine, what that does is it stimulates protein synthesis. Um, so by stimulating protein synthesis, by spiking it before you work out and after, uh, by using whey protein, which gets digested very quickly, um, and in, in the case of my product with Legion, it has even additional leucine, um, research shows that there is a, it does have an effect over time. It's not a huge effect, um, but in my experience over the years as a natural weightlifter, by accumulating a lot of little advantages, um, it actually can add up to be something that is worthwhile. It's not going to make a difference, you know, uh, having whey protein or just protein at all before and after your workouts, it's not going to make the difference between like having a good physique and not having a good physique. But research shows that it does, there is a benefit for us weightlifters. Um, so those are the times that matter in terms of how much 30 to 40 grams of whey protein is all you need. Really what you're looking for is at least three to five, three to five grams of leucine, which is what you would find in about 30 grams of protein or whey protein. Um, but there is research that shows that uh, uh, leucine, the more leucine uh, you're getting in that meal, the higher the, the protein synthesis rates go. So um, that's why I added leucine to each serving of my protein. Uh, so those are the times that matter. There aren't any other times that matter all that much. Um, I'm going to make a note here of there is one, which is before you go to sleep. Um, having protein, especially a slow digesting protein like casein or um, it doesn't have to be casein powder. It could be you could like I prefer to eat um, like some low fat low fat cottage cheese or, or low fat uh, Greek yogurt, which of course has casein in it. Um, but there's research that shows that having a slow burning protein, uh, which basically what that does is just uh, it, it makes amino acids available throughout when you're sleeping. Um, it, that doesn't prevent muscle. Catabolism. It's not like you're going catabolic in the night if you don't have protein before you, go, before you go to bed. But research has shown that it can improve muscle recovery, which makes sense. If you're in bed for eight hours um, and you have, let's say, that your protein, the last time you ate protein was dinner, 6 o'clock. You go to bed at 11. By then, your meal, unless you ate an obscene amount of food, is going to be fully absorbed. So amino acid levels in your blood are back down to not, they're all gone. It's all been absorbed and, and, and pulled out. So now your body's going to, you know, sit in bed for eight hours without any amino acids available in the blood for recovery. That it just makes sense that making those available for recovery improves recovery. And that's what the, uh, I'll link a study and that's what the study shows. Um, so I do have some protein before I go to bed. Again, it's not very much. 20, 30 grams, slower digesting. I either have just a scoop of egg protein, um, which I like a lot. I will link the, the product that I use. It's naturally sweet and naturally flavored. Doesn't taste bad, um, doesn't bother my stomach. It's just a good product. Um, so I'll either do that or I'll eat some low fat cottage cheese or 0% you know, uh, Greek yogurt, depending on what I feel like. So those are really the only times when it matters uh, that you eat protein in terms of building muscle. In terms of frequency, like how often you eat protein, you'll hear different things on this. Some people say you have to eat protein every three hours to build muscle. Some people say it doesn't matter. Eat all your protein in one meal a day. Um, I'm going to link uh, a study below that shows that more frequently, uh, a higher frequency of, of eating protein um, can, can increase the total uh, it's really what you're talking about is the net protein th synthesis uh, over the course of a day. So your body builds up proteins and it breaks down proteins. Um, when you compare those, did you either build up more than you broke down or did you break down more than you build up? Building muscle over time is just a slow accumulation of building up more protein molecules than you broke down in the day, essentially. Um, so there may be something to eating protein more frequently. Personally, I like to eat. Pro I, I just like to eat every few hours. I'm not... Um, 
like you know, you can you can do a diet a type of eating routine like intermittent fasting if you want to if you like it. There's nothing all that inherently special about it. But if you just prefer to eat that way, then that's fine. I don't. Um, you know, I, I have a very busy schedule. I'm up at 6:30 in the morning and I work out, and then I'm working all day, working at night. So I I like the the steady energy that uh, regular food gives me. After about 12 hours of fasting or so, I do start to feel a little bit. Uh, I guess energy deprived, especially if I'm, you know, all my work is is mental and I have to be thinking. And I, I find that carbs in particular actually just help with mental acuity. Um, so, if if you check out this this paper that I'm linking, um, you know, the question is how big of a difference does it make? Once again, it's probably similar to the pre and post workout protein timing issue, where it's not going to make that big of a difference. Like if you only if you got all your protein in two or three meals a day with six hours in between each, that's fine. Like the the I'm going to link another study that just it does show that the the what is most important is hitting your total number hitting the amount of protein that you need every day which uh, if you want to just play it safe call it one gram per pound unless you're severely overweight then you can eat less but if you're moderately lean uh, guy or girl and you want to be able to build muscle let's just play just keep it simple one gram per pound do not go below 0.8 grams per pound um, so the the most important thing is that you hit those numbers every day um, hitting those numbers with a higher meal frequency, you know, may uh, help you a little bit, you know, over time, um, just like how pre and post workout protein works. So that's why I also just prefer to eat protein every few hours, just because if it does give me a little bit of a boost, then sounds good, and I like to eat that way anyway. But don't think that you can't build muscle unless you do that. That's not true. If you, um, you know, let's say that you're just, uh, your schedule doesn't really permit that um, and you're always on the run, you're busy, you're traveling a lot or whatever, the most important thing is just that you hit your numbers uh, every day. So that's it. That's all I really wanted to cover in this short video. Um, just to recap, have some protein before and after you work out. Ideally, faster digesting, high leucine protein, uh, whey protein works very good for this. And uh, throughout the rest of the day, you can eat whatever types of protein that you like. I mean, I prefer to get most of my protein from food. Um, at, at least, at least, you know, 50, 60 percent of it is from food. On, you know, I try to probably get closer to 70 percent. Just depends what I'm doing that day. Sometimes I just need something fast and simple, and that's what shakes are good for. Um, and then in terms of protein frequency, don't worry if you can't eat protein every few hours. But if you can and if you're okay with it, I do recommend doing it because um, you know it may help you build a little bit more muscle over time. All right, hope you like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.